Um, so let's get started. Uh, some of you uh, in the exam one feedback suggest me to, uh, to provide actual uh, practice problem. And I thought about it. I think the best uh, actual practice problem uh, is the uh, example problem in the textbook for each section. Well, you know the section number for, for each topic. So you can go to the textbook and use the example problem in the in, for each section as the actual uh, practice problem. Uh, well, wh when I taught this class like two years ago, I use I always use that uh, textbook example problem during the class as my example problem during the class. But uh, from my previous feedback, some students told me that they didn't like the idea that I use the same example problem in class and test books. They feel like, okay, why do I need to come to class? So that's why in this semester, I completely changed all my example problem in the class. So they are different from the uh, test book example problem. But I still feel that uh, the author make the, make the uh, example problem in test book for good reason. So if you really want to, uh, to like uh, do some like extra practice and to make sure that you completely understand each topic, use that problem. And uh, and for the topic covered in the exam two, well, the bean interpolation I know that is is from the is is in the class that before the exam one, but I still put it here because. Uh, well, I will not ask the same like similar question like in exam one, like just do the interpolation. I put it here because the interpolation, the being interpolation can be easily combined with other topics. Like if I give the force and if uh, force applied and give you the structure and ask you to find the displacement at a random point in that structure, then you will need interpolation, right? It's a small, topic that can be easily combined with other topic and make a big problem. So I still put it here. Uh, if you uh, for, forgot about how to do this, it's, it's, it's good chance that you can review this part. So this the only thing for the concept part, the, the only thing here is this one and the shape function. Of oh, course, shape function I'll provide in the in the formula sheet. Oh, uh, I forgot the vote result. I, I will I will show you the result later. Uh, I think it's like uh, majority of you still want me to uh, provide the formula sheet. Uh, so I, I, will, uh, I will do that later. So um, so these are the, this one is the example problem in class and this is a homework, uh, homework problem. And also there's one problem in exam one if you really want to check that one. Uh, this, really no trick here. You just plug the shape function and nodal degree of freedom into this equation and you're done. And the, the new topic was uh, start from the final element equation. So uh, we start with uh, the case Stephen matrix. So Stephen matrix of the bin element, EI over L cube, and 12, 6L, negative 12, 6L, 6L, 4L square, negative 6L, 2L square, negative 12, 12, negative 6L, and 6L, 2L square, negative 6L, 4L squared. So this is a K matrix for bin element. Uh, so in the example problem in previous, uh, I think it's a homework problem or, exam, or I think it's this problem. Um, during the office, some student told me that uh, somehow they found the unit for the, uh, for the force and couple. So basically, if I put the U and V, uh, no, V and theta, V1, theta1, V2, theta2. And in, on this side, you should have the F1, C1, F2, C2. They said after the multiply everything, the unit of F and C, they are not like not correct. So uh, that's because in the Stephanie matrix, you need to be careful that we have L here, we have L square here. 
So L has a unit, let's say meter or inch. So it has unit and L square is either meter square or inch square. So you consider this unit and the unit here and then uh, whatever you need for the uh, V and the theta. So theta is non unit is like dimension is, but V has displacement unit like meter. So if you combine all this together, the force and uh, couple you calculate then it should be correct. So this is the one part that you need to be careful. Uh, don't torture yourself during the exam whether unit are not correct. Um, so this is a stiff matrix. And uh, another topic is once we have stiff matrix, we use the KQ equal to F uh, and we solve unknown degree freedom. And also uh, the next step is how to calculate bin moment and shear force for the bin uh, problem. So bending moment and shear force. So we talk about two methods in class. The first one is using the KQ equal to F and using the sign convention of the external parallels and the bending moment shear force. We find a relation between the F and bending moment shear force. So is, let's say we have a K matrix. I won't repeat it here. And let's say for this element, we have the V1, theta one, V2, theta two, all node different for a single element. And it should equal, it should be equal to external applied force, F1, C1, F2, C2. And I talk about a sign convention for external applied loads, always follow the coordinates. So whenever it's upward, it's positive in y direction. So F is positive. Whenever it's counterclockwise, well, if X is from left to right, then whenever it's counterclockwise, it's positive rotation. So that is the sign convention for external applied force. But for the bending moment shear force, it's, it's integration of normal stress of the cross section and integration of the shear stress of the cross section. So the sign of bending moment and shear force should follow the sign of the stress component, which is a second or tensor. So which means that if on the positive surface, positive direction is positive. It's negative surface, negative direction is positive. But if like positive direction, positive surface, negative direction, then become negative. And same thing if it's negative surface, positive direction is also negative. So uh, for detail, if you are confused here, uh, go back to the uh, previous lecture uh, and watch it. So I will put it here, put it here directly. So at the first note, is the is the sign is opposite. So V Y one shear force. M1, VY2, M2. So this is the, the first method. And second method is uh, we use the definition. So, well, from your previous class, the bending moment should be EI dV dx second derivative, and the shear force should be negative EI dV dx third derivative. So we use that one and uh, we have the interpolation function. You, we have this one. So dv dx second derivative means uh, an shape function double prime, right? So that is the second method. So m equal to ei dv dx. And because our V is in terms of S, so chain rule differentiation, we have the L square coming out. So, and dV dS, second derivative. And if we uh, put the double prime of the shape function, I can write as EI L square negative six plus 12 S V one negative four plus six S theta one six minus 12 S 
v2 plus l times negative 2 plus 6s theta 2. And the shear force, uh, we differentiate again. Uh, so Vy equal to negative Ei. This is by definition dV dx. And if I write in terms of the V as function of S, then we have the L cube dV ds, third derivative. And so it's basically differentiate this one with respect to S again. Uh, EI L cube V1 negative 6L theta 1 plus 12 V2 negative 6L theta 2. So these are the basic equation uh, of how to calculate any moment initial force. And of course, there you can consider there is another, it's not a separate method, but you can consider this kind of method. Uh, so if you have uh, the expression in previous step, if you already calculate the expression of V in terms of S, then you calculate, you just differentiate with that expression directly. And you don't even need to go to this step again. So if that is like, make, can make your calculation easier, you can consider this is the uh, third method. So it's basically the same thing, just like you choose whichever is easier. And of course, the difference here for these two methods is that this one, this one is only calculate, they can only calculate the minimum initial force at node. But this one can calculate the minimum initial force on the whole beam, right? It's a function of S. So you can, you can find the minimum initial force at any point of that beam element. But this, the first one is only at node. So these are two uh, methods of calculating shear force and bending moment. And let's check our, uh, the problem we did. Uh, I think the first example is the uh, example problem in class and to solve for the unknown degree freedom for given external power load and the structure and also ask for bending moment and shear force. And the second one uh, is kind of like, well, KQ equal to F. The example problem in class is I have the K, I have the F, I ask a Q. And the homework is I give the, I have the K, I have the Q and ask F, right? It's, I use the same equation. If you consider all different kinds of problem, it's just, I use the same equation different way. So in this one, I give the Q, but I ask what the force applied and what's the supportive reaction. So basically it's the same thing. Uh, if you understand the whole, uh, the whole topic. And uh, we also have a very small uh, topic about uh, how to convert the distributed load to equivalent nodal force because KQ to F, the F is always the equivalent nodal force. So in this one, uh, we had a long derivation in class. So I will give, I will put the equation here directly. So the equivalent F1, if we have the distributed force PS, it should be L integrate from uh, zero to one, of course, it's in terms of the reference coordinate S is ordered from zero to one. If it's from the physical coordinates, X1 to X2 of that element. So let's say PS, N1, DS. And equivalent couple at node one is L integration zero to one, PS, N2, DS. And same thing at node two, zero to one, PS, and three, DS, C2, L, integration, PS, and four, DS. Now, if I put this uh, four equation in this way, it's much, much easier for you to uh, remember the whole thing or understand the whole thing, right? It's just the only thing change for F1, C1, F2 is a shear function, N1, N2, N3, N4. The rest are the same. So this is basically if we have the distributed force, PS. And whatever PS, 
you just plug in. So I did an example problem in class, uh, which is a uniformly distributed, which means that if PS equal to P is constant, uniform distributed, then I uh, did all the calculation in class. And the final result is the equivalent node of force at the first node half of PL and second node half of PL and the equivalent couple PL square over 12 and negative PL square over 12. So this is a special, special situation of if the PS equal to P is the uniform distributed. And for the problems, if it has the uniform distributed force uh, involved, you can use this one directly. And uh, of course, they a uh, homework problem that I ask, uh, what if it is the linearly distributed force? So in this situation, the key here is that you need to know what is the PS. Right, so I remember a lot of students were confused uh, during the office hour for this problem because they cannot figure out, okay, what is a PS? So uh, mathematically for a very general linear polynomial uh, kind of problem that if you don't know what is a PS, the best way is that linear polynomial, it also it always has a uh, constant term and a linear term, right? This is a, uh, a general form of the linear function. And then you have two information. So P at S equal to zero is equal to zero. P at S equal to one is equal to Q naught. And you plug this two in this equation, you can solve for A zero and A one. And then you have PS. And once you have PS, you just plug in these four equations and calculation, right? The rest part is, is easy. So uh, so if you know this part, I think this problem is not very complicated. And also let's say, if I have a problem, the uniform distributed force is in this way, you still can find out what the PS, right? So it's kind of the same thing. Just do a little bit of uh, variation. You should know how to calculate that. So uh, this is a, uh, situation when the externally applied force have the uh, distributed force uh, on it. And I did uh, several uh, like combined problems uh, in class. So the first one is that it gives a uh, structure and external applied force as for deflection and the rotation and node two. Is it? Yes. Um, and the second one is calculate VS. That's, that's why what I said in, at the beginning, it's easy to um, combine the beam interpolation in, in, into this section because it's like a small topic that you first calculate all unknown degree freedom. And once you have unknown degree freedom, you need to do the beam interpolation to calculate VS. So it's very easy to combine that topic in. So make sure that you understand the part. And after that, what the phenomenon is force. And the same thing for the, I think this is a homework problem, I guess. Uh, also have the uniform distributed force applied and ask the bending moment and shear force. Uh, what else? Yeah. So uh, now if you look at big picture of all this problem, it's like, the structure is a little bit different. The external platforms, it's a little bit different. And um, the basic procedure, sometimes they ask for the unknown degree freedom. Sometimes they ask for the V as function S, we need the interpolation, so one more step. And uh, sometimes it asks any money show forth, so one more step again. Uh, so uh, it's basically the same thing. So I will do a, I will write a basic procedure for this type of the problem. First, of course, you need to know 
the stiff matrix of each element. Um, if you have several elements, you need to uh, do assembly later on. But if it's only one element, sometimes it's one element, sometimes it's like several uh, different elements, right? So depending on how many elements you have. And the second one, if only concentrated force or couple of light, uh, there's no need to like equivalent force. But if there's a uniform distributed force applied, you need to convert uh, how to com you need to how to convert the distributed force to equivalent nodal force. So like, what should be the Fi and the Ci at each node? And once you have the K, you have the F, we can use the KQ equal to F to calculate unknown degree, unknown degree freedom Q, right? So K Q equal to solve for unknown degree freedom. And for the problem like this one, you need to go more uh, one more step to use the beam interpolation. So if it requires interpolation, of course, then uh, then we can use Vs M1, V1, N2 theta one, N three, V two, N four, theta two. And uh, as you can see, a lot of questions ask about the bending moment shear force. So you can use what we if gave here, these two methods uh, based on the question, like if only add as, as note, you can use both of them. If you ask the expression of the bending moment shear force, you can only, only use method two. So that is considered as the last step. Bending moment and initial force. And of course, if, if the expression here is easy enough, you can use definition uh, EI dv, EI of L uh, square dv ds, second, uh, dv ds second derivative as bending moment and negative EI of L cube dv ds third derivative third derivative as the shear force. So you can use definition also, if, if you already calculate this expression in the problem. So, um, so this is the basic procedure for the uh, beam part. Um, and the next topic is uh, CST. So uh, For this one, uh, the calculation may be, uh, it's a little bit complicated. complicated. Well, it's not, it's just, you just need to be careful. It's like X1 minus X2, X2 minus X1. It's like, you need to be very careful. If you make a mistake at the very beginning stage, then you make a mistake for the whole problem. Uh, and um, once you have all the F and B and C based on the coordinates of each node, uh, then you have, you can have the, you can do the interpolation, then shape function they are a function of the F, B, C, and also the area of the triangle. So, and this is the uh, interpolation for displacement in X direction, same thing for displacement in the Y direction. So this is a general way of doing the uh, CST interpolation, and it can use for the point either within the CST element or on the edge of CST element. But if the question is like purely ask you uh, the a point on the edge, uh, then you can use 1D interpolation. I did the example problem for this one in class. You can check that one later. Uh, actually, like two years ago in the in the exam two, I I made a five points uh, problem that I have CFC element that have everything else like nodal degree freedom and everything, and I put a point on the edge and ask what is the displacement there, and a lot of students like spent a lot of time calculate everything. And finally, yes, they can get correct result. But if you use this one, it takes like 
two minutes, right? So <laughs> make sure you understand this part. Um, uh, so if it's on the edge, then we can just find out what is the corresponding S and put it plug in here and calculate directly. And uh, of course, uh, for the plain stress problem, we need to know what is the strain and the stress. So for the strain, I derived this one in the class. So, uh, so this is a B matrix. Strain vector equal to B matrix times the Q. And since you are, you already calculated you, uh, the, if like in previous step, you already have the, all the unknown reference solved, you can use this one to calculate strain. Or uh, if you have, if you have the previous step already have the expression, expression of U and a V, then again, you can use the definition of the strain uh, in X direction, which is the partial U over partial X, strain the Y direction is partial V, partial Y over partial Y, and the gamma XY is equal to partial U over partial Y plus partial V over partial X. And then as you can see my the solution I posted yesterday, uh, I used that one. So it's like, if you already have this expression and then the strain calculation is, is much, much easier than you you write the whole B matrix again and put all the vector here. So, uh, well, all of them are correct. It's just like, which method can save you more time during the exam. Um, hey, Tang, I have a quick question about the B matrix. Uh, so when we're using the B matrix to calculate uh, the stiffness, stiffness matrix, do we include the one over two A coefficient or is the B matrix just the B1, zero, B2? It, it, it includes one over two A. It always includes one over two A. Okay, awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it includes this one. <laughs> so, and from strain to stress, that is the content. Uh, that's not content of FEA, that's completely like what you learned in previous class. So, uh, it all depends on the material property, what is Young's modulus mod or the Poisson ratio. And this C matrix, this is a C matrix. So stress vector equal to C matrix times the strain vector. So this part is always the same for plain stress problem. And the example problem, problem I did in class, uh, as you can see that, well, in the homework, I didn't ask uh, the, because homework, I can only like make three problems. And because last week, there's only like, but last, last week we have the project due, so I didn't make any assignment homework ado. So it's like the, the homework problem practice is kind of, I didn't put anything like this, but this is the part you need to know. Um, so this is the point on edge, and this is the point uh, within the element. So let's say if you already have everything calculated here, of course, you can just put the two points plug in X and Y. But if for a small problem, I only ask this part, use 1D equation, it can save you a lot of time. Um, and this one is a homework problem and it asks the displacement of U and V and strain at that point, at a, at a single point. So this is for the interpolation and stress strain calculation. And of course, we also need to know the CST for the stiff matrix for CST. So, uh, if we know the thickness, the thickness of the CST element is H and the area of the CST element is A, then the K matrix becomes H A, which the volume of the uh, CST element and B transpose times C times B. So uh, you already practiced this one in the in your homework. And another thing is that, of course, the equivalent of the force, right? Same as same as in the beam. So uh, I think it's the externally. Of 
prescribed for those. So we talk about three situations. The first one is this one is the, if we have the concentrated force applied at nodes. So for that one, it's, it's, it's very straightforward. So let's say if at each node I give you Ix, the force applied at node I in the x direction and force applied at node I in the y direction, then this force vector the kq to f, the, the f vector, we can write it as f1x, well, for a single element, we have three nodes. So f1y, f2x, f2y, f3x, f3y. And the second situation I talk about in class is the force applied on the edge. So it's more like a force applied on an area. Right, we sometimes in the mechanical material we call it stuff detraction. So let's say uh, we have the Tx, Ty. So it's surface traction in the x direction, surface traction in the y direction, and the unit is normally Newton per meter square, or if you use uh, like pound inch, it's the same thing. And let's say if the if it's on the edge, for example, it's on, on the edge one, two. Then uh, also the length is L, the thickness is H. So then the force vector we can write it as H times L. We divide, divide by half half to node one and node two. So T x, t, y, t, x, t, y. And if it's upon on edge one, two, then on edge on, on node three, there's no, uh, it's zero there. For the equivalent uh, nodal force of this distribution force applied on edge one, two. And the third one is the body force. And I think the homework problem due last night was about the body force and uh, Let's say it has the CSC has area A and the thickness H, and we have the body force BX, body force in X direction, body force in Y direction, and the unit normally given as force per volume. And then this vector I can write it as is evenly divided to three nodes, right? So it is uh, volume AH over three, and then it becomes BX, BY, BX, BY, BX, BY. So this is the equivalent uh, nodal force for different situation. And uh, so, uh, this is the example problem in class. Uh, given the force applied and given the structure, it has two CSD elements and ask about the stress. And, uh, and the homework problem is K is given. So it's like I skip the whole, the whole H, H, A, B, transpose C, B, this part, I give the K directly. So it's like start from the middle. And then you solve for the unknown degree of freedom. And you do the interpolation to calculate the ux, ui, right? You have you have the unknown degree of freedom first, solve the first, you calculate the f, and then you need to use the interpolation. You have the u in terms of s, u in terms of y, and then you calculate the strain. So, and the third problem is given the force applied, body force, and uh, given the Young's modulus, Poisson ratio, material property and h a is you can calculate based on the coordinates and x about stress component um so this is more like uh again very similar problem if i put all of these together and this was the exam problem <laughs> uh, two years ago when i taught this class so I, I, at that time, I, I made it in this way because I want to save students some time to calculate the 
H A B transpose C times C down B. So, uh, so I may ask a section, a different combination like uh, stress strain, interpolation, K K Q F, commonly uh, make a different combination to make it doable in, uh, in the exam. But you need to understand the whole thing. And for given information and for uh, the question asked, you need to have your own very clear procedure. Where should I start? I think I use this example problem in class. I did the example like uh, for if the stress is given, how to calculate stress? Oh, we need to calculate strain. If strain, we, if we need to calculate strain, we need to use the KQ to F, we need to calculate Q. If we uh, use KQ to F, we, know, we need to know how to assemble the K, how to find the equivalent of the force F. So this part should be very clear. Most of the time, it's not because students don't know how to use the equation or how to really plug in a value into the equation. It's, it's they don't know how to solve, what is the, like, the logic, how to solve this problem. So that is the most important part. You can try to practice that part uh, uh, today, uh, prepare now, to, today, tomorrow, prepare for the exam. So uh, I think I can do the basic procedure for these two section. So for this part, so for these two problems, okay, let's, let's do this part first. Yes, you can you can print it. I think I can upload it soon. I I have class this afternoon, but I ho hopefully I can uh, upload it before I sleep tonight. So you can print it in advance. Um, the basic procedure for this part. So this part is like, I give the coordinates and I give the nodal degree of freedom. So, uh, four node rectangle is not including this, it's not. So let's say if the coordinates are given, we first need to calculate all the Fi, Bi, and Ci, right? And then once we have the Fi, Bi, and Ci, we need to know, we can calculate what is the shape function. And once we have shape function, of course, we can do the interpolation. So, uh, so this is like this one and this one. So U, X, Y, N1, U1, N2, U2, plus n3 u3. So I write in this way, i from one to three. And i ui. And the same thing for the xy. And uh, as I said, if it's on the edge, if it's a point on the edge, then you can use 1D interpolation. 1 minus s, 1 minus s, uh, u1 plus s u2, s equal to x of l. So this is basically if the only ask for displacement, uh, for displacement, and if we go one more step to calculate strain, then we can. Let me come right here. Use strain equal to B matrix times all nodal degree of freedom. So this is the one method, and as as I said, there is another method you can we can use. I don't know why it's keep jumping around. Or we can use the definition of the strain. So if you already have the U and a V expression, so we can calculate the strain in the X direction, partial U over partial X, strain in the Y direction, partial V over partial Y, and shear strain, gamma XY is partial U, partial Y, plus partial V, partial X. So these are two different 
uh, way to calculate the strain vector. And of course, the problem here doesn't ask about uh, the stress, uh, but we can go one more step, right? If we ask about stress for this one, then we can use stress equal to C times strain. So this is for uh, this type of the problem. If the nodal degree is given, uh, we can follow this procedure. And the other type is that, so for this section is that the nodal degree freedom is not given, it's just only given the external applied force. And then you need to capture the nodal degree first. So for this one, uh, I can put it here. So the first step, uh, we need to find out uh, what is stiff matrix for each element. So we use the K equal to H A B transpose C times B. Of course, uh, I, I write it this way, but there are like, you, you may have like small step to reach this uh, equation because uh, normally what is given is the coordinate xi, yi, and then you use the xi, yi, you calculate what is the fi, bi, ci, and you use this one to calculate what is the b matrix, and then you calculate what is k, right? So you may consider, I put it here as one step, you may consider this as like small step included in this one step. And once you have the k for the CST element, the next one is the equivalent force. Of course, if it's concentrated force, it's easy. Concentrated force and couple is easy. If it has the uh, distributed force on the edge or body force, then we need to find out what is a work equivalent nodal force. And the third step is, step is that once we have the K, we have the F, we can calculate Q. And as we can see that uh, the problem as the, this one, so if as this one, we need to go one more step, that is the interpolation. U, X, Y, and V, X, Y. And also some problem ask about the stress strain. Well, we, we always need to calculate strain first and then stress, right? So let's say strain. Uh, again, for CST element, we can, as I said, we can use either definition or the, the strain equal to B times Q. B, make sure that B for B element and for CST element are completely different. Don't be confusing with them. Um, and also definition. So it's basically like strain x ration due uh, partial, partial x, that kind of thing. If you already have this expression ready. And once we have the strain vector, the stress is just equal to C times strain. So this is a type of problem that if we start from uh, well, if the nodal degree freedom is not given, we only give the uh, external black applied force. So this is like more real situation kind of problem. I know the structure, I know the external applied force, and it solves everything. So we need to start from the KQ equal to F. What is K? What is F? What is, uh, how to solve the nodal degree freedom? And then go to interpolation, stress, and stress, strain and stress. So, uh, Oh, I also, one thing I want to emphasize here is that uh, one thing I, I didn't put it here is uh, modeling accuracy. 
I think I spent a whole class uh, in the BIM chapter, at the end of BIM chapter, talk about the modeling accuracy for the BIM problem. And for the CST element, I have spent about 30 minutes in class talk about the modeling accuracy. And that are the very important concept. I don't want to repeat the whole thing again because to make it like, if you, are, if you understand, you already understand, that's like not complicated, not confusing. But if you don't understand, probably I need to spend like a, a long time to explain in a clear way. So I didn't put it here. If you not, if you're not clear that part about that part, uh, it's better that you go back to the lecture and watch the lecture, uh, the, the watch the video. Um, well, of course, I cannot like make a uh, uh, a individual problem ask about the modern accuracy, but I can always like uh, for example for uh, I I think in class I for this one after you calculate everything and then I can have a small question at the end. What the, do you think the result is accurate or is just approximation? And the same thing for the bean chapter. So make sure that you understand their part. And uh, any other question? It's not going to be anything with using MATLAB. It's just like all hand calculations, right? It's all hand calculations. Okay, uh, cool. MATLAB will not be really, uh, necessary uh, for the. Perfect. Perfect. Any other question? Will there be any questions on Abacus on the exam? Just like. Yeah. If you want, I can add some, but. No, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> oh, one thing I want to say that I, I probably will change something for the exam too, because last time uh, a lot of students confused about like x equal to something and trying to find solve for x. So it caused a lot of confusion for, uh, no, not a lot, but several students. Um, uh, so this time I decided that you can call me during the exam and I will put something like uh, students are allowed to call the instructor during the exam in the monologue. Hopefully they, they will, it will be okay. Well, you will get, you, you will be flagged and I, I will say it, but as long as you, you call me during the exam time, it's okay. But <laughs> if you call anybody else, that's, it's cheating, of course. I can see all the records um, that when you call me, uh, and uh, so I can answer you the question related to problem clarification. Uh, so it's not like, oh, should I do it in this way? Or uh, like, how should I solve this? Not, not that type of question. It's only uh, the problem clarification kind of pro uh, question. So you can call me. Don't text because it's, it's, it's really confusing that I don't know if you are really texting me or or like in previous semester, if you're using a check or something, the only uh, phone call call me uh, during the exam. And if you need any clarification for the problem statement. Cool. Any other question or any other good suggestion? I may, I may consider trying. Um, you could have the uh, instruction, I guess, in the exam itself, maybe in one of the problems, like before question one or something. Oh, you mean put the instruction in the exam? Yeah. I, I would definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Not, not like the page before, and then we, you know, when we access the exam, we didn't see them again. Okay. Yeah, that, well, I didn't use the uh, online before, so I thought that it's like, because on my side, it's always on top of the, the instruction is always on top of the uh, exam, so I didn't know. But this time, if there's x equal to something, I would put it at the end of each problem, x equal to something. All right, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Any other question? Um, will we be asked to use that um, formula to um, make the K matrix the HA times B transpose times C times B. Like we wouldn't be asked to calculate that. I I, I can only say that I would make it doable. Okay. For, for the exam for the two hours or four hours, two to four hours. I would make it doable. Alrighty. Any other questions? 
What was your phone number again? Uh, I will, I will put in the chat. Oh, so you put that on the exam instructions just because we can't have like notes out. So, sorry, what is it? I put in has private message. Okay, nice to everyone. Uh, sorry, what, what did you say? Oh, I just said, could you put that in the exam instructions as well, just because we can't have notes out or anything? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I, I will put my, my uh, information necessary uh, in the exam. Okay. Any other question? So if no question, I will stop this recording. And uh, thank you for coming to class. And good luck on Wednesday. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Ting. Thank you. Ting, no lecture on Wednesday, right? Uh, no, there will be no class. Okay. All right, thanks. Office hours, right? Uh, we will have office hours at office hours. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day.